Okay, so this is the pre-lab lecture to lab one analysis of an antacid. And guys, keep in mind that technically this lab is not meant to necessarily correlate to your lecture material right now, but more be a um, refresher of the first semester chemistry concepts and techniques for lab. So it's really just about um, making sure you're comfortable in lab and learning how to access and classify report data the way we're going to for the most of the semester. Now, this lab deals primarily with acids and bases. And so if you think back, um, the Arrhenius definition of an acid is it is always something that donates an H plus to solution. Something like HCl will dissociate in water to give an H plus and a Cl minus. Then a base, according to Arrhenius, is going to donate an OH minus, something like sodium hydroxide. In water, this is going to dissociate to give us an Na plus and a hydroxide ion. Okay? Now, if we were to react these two things together, a neutralization reaction where you have any acid reacting with any base, it's going to give us always products that are water and some salt. Here it's just NaCl. And remember that technically according to um, your book for semester, you're going to have a net ionic equation where H plus plus OH minus reacts to form H2O. And when they're talking about this in your pre-lab, they don't really go into what the net ionic equations are and how to get there. So if you need a refresher on that, it might be a good idea to look that up before class. But this is the net ionic equation. You're always going to have an H plus, you're always going to have an OH minus for this lab, and they're going to react to form water and a salt. Now, when we have that, we have two things that we need to consider. First of all, sodium hydroxide is hydroscopic which means that while it is sitting here in a beaker, it is absorbing water from the air. So it's gaining water, it's gaining volume, its concentration is so slowly going down, which means the concentration of the solution in your flask yesterday, today, and tomorrow are all going to vary. So it's really important that we actually find the concentration of the sodium hydroxide using a primary standard. And if you think back to the lab where we titrated a carbonated beverage, we said that a primary standard has to be something with a large molar mass, it has to be stable, and it has to react in a predictable way. Okay? So for us, we have a couple of parts to this lab. We're going to use KHP potassium hydrogen phthalate, not potassium hydrogen and phosphorus, to, as our primary standard. We're going to use KHP to eventually find the molarity of NaOH. We can do this because KHP is an um, acid that reacts with sodium hydro hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio and in a predictable way. So what you're going to do is you are going to take your KHP, react it with sodium hydroxide, you're going to get water and Kp plus maybe. Um, this is really not the formula, it's just that the formula is really long, it's just something that we actually abbreviate more than normal for chemistry. Now, in order to do this, we show you in your pre-lab that if you want to neutralize approximately 20 milliliters, you need something like 0.4 grams of this. Now, to be entirely honest, it doesn't matter how much you get. Don't waste a lot of time trying to get right to 0 0.40. That's not going to matter. Generally, something between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 should be fine. And really, if you're a little below that, it's okay. Just don't go too much below that. 
Um, now, if you have grams of KHP, thinking all the way back to unit or chapter 3 from Chem 1, we can go from grams of KHP to moles. We always want to talk about moles. We can do that using molar mass. Now, molar mass is actually given to you in the pre-lab. It's 204.23 grams per mole of KHP. And if you have moles of KHP, and you know that this is a one-to-one -one ratio, it means that you can have the moles of NaOH. And again, this is really just given in your pre-lab, but I want to make sure you guys are seeing this in a general basis. So you're going to set up your mass. You know that every time you have 204.23 grams, you have one mole of KHP. And then every time you have one mole of KHP, you have one mole of NaOH. But really, we don't want to talk about just moles. We want to talk about it in liters. So in order to get the liters that contain this, what you're going to be doing is a titration. So you're going to take your flask. Oops. It's two 50-milliliter flasks. So you're going to have two trials. And in each of these, you are going to put something like about 0 0.3 grams of KHP. It doesn't matter how much you have. As long as you label this with the chemical, so your label should say KHP, the exact mass to all sig figs, guys, every single one, the date, and your name. It should contain all of that. Then you're going to add some uh, deionized water to dissolve it. It may take a few uh, minutes. Just swirl it gently. It'll be fine. The way that I usually add water to this is I spray the wall and let it run down here. That way you rinse the any additional KHP off the side of the flask so you get as much as you can dissolved. Then you also need to add indicator. Do not forget your indicator or it will not work at all. Generally you need about two to three drops. You can add three to four, it doesn't matter. The indicator is just going to tell you when you have reached that endpoint and when you have exactly um, the right amount of NaOH. Thinking back to Chem 111, uh, remember that your burette, the volume starts at 0, 0.0 here, and all the way down here it's at 50. Don't let anybody talk you into reading this and then subtracting. Just read it as it's read. Because you know uh, you're only going to need about 35 to 45 milliliters for this, don't waste a lot of time trying to get the volume up to the zero. Just get it somewhere between zero and five and you'll be okay. Um, record your initial volume and then you're going to titrate. When it ends, so like let's say that this is 10, 10.1, 10 10.2, and so on. If you have your meniscus right there, you should be able to read this to four sig figs. You should have 10.1, and then you're going to estimate some amount between the 0.1 and the 0.2, so maybe something like 10.15, okay? That is four sig figs. Make sure you are doing the right number of sig figs, and you are recording everything. So then you're going to take your final volume minus your initial find the amount used. Having volume, having moles is going to allow you to find the molarity of your NaOH. The problem is molarity is in moles per liter. We just found out a minute ago how to get moles. 
Moles comes from this type of calculation. You do it stepwise in your data section, but you get the idea. Now this is moles over liters, but this is in milliliters. So make sure whatever volume you get, you convert to liters before you plug it in. Once you have your molarity, you're going to end up averaging two molarities together to make sure you um, have a reasonable set of data. Hmm. Okay, so if you look at your data section, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Oh, this is the wrong one. Um, that's okay. Okay, so if you go to your data section, what you're going to see is that on page 7, there is a spot to take um, everything that we've just done and fill it all in. There we go. So you have the mass of your flask, you're going to write down the mass of the flask and the KHP, and you're going to get the overall mass of your KHP. Once you have the mass, you're going to convert to, K to the moles by dividing by um, 204. Really, this should be 204.23. You want to use as many sig figs as you can, guys. Um, then you're going to record the initial and final volume of your burette that's going to deliver the sodium hydroxide. Um, when you do that, you'll get the volume of sodium hydroxide. The problem is this is going to be in milliliters. Make sure you are um, multiplying by 1,000 to get you into liters before that. Once you have the molarity of NaOH, that is what you are going to use in the next section where you're titrating the antacid, okay? Now let's go back to this for a second. It turns out that for this type of problem where you have a buffered solution, you actually have an easier time taking the the base that is present in um, that's present because it's a buffer. Mm, let's say something like MgOH2. With what's going to happen is in water, you're going to get magnesium and two hydroxides. Now. Um, if you have two hydroxides, you're going to need a different ratio. 2OH minus plus H plus is going to give you, um, you need two of these to make two waters. So kind of make sure you're paying attention to which antacid you're using. We're going to be using Tums for this lab. Now because this is a buffered solution, it turns out that having some antacid added to the water is going to be really difficult to just titrate outright with acid. Um, you add acid, it neutralizes, but then it buffers back. You add more acid, it buffers back. So really the easiest thing to do is to take this antacid tablet and then add in an excess of acid. And then you're going to go back and retitrate or back titrate with sodium hydroxide. So the amount of base in your antacid is going to be part of the base that's titrated with your HCl. So the moles of HCl minus the moles of base from NaOH is going to give us the moles of base in your antacid. Okay, now in order to do this, what you're going to um, 
really set up is it's going to be the same as for the first part. The difference is really um, uh, how much of your tablet you're going to use. Um, because we're looking for uh, just enough to react with hopefully no more than what's in your burette, you're going to add about 0.2 grams. Again, it doesn't really matter. Something like 0.1 to 0.2 is going to be sufficient um, of your Tom's tablet. And it should be crushed up for you already. And then you're going to add the water, the indicator, and you're going to titrate exactly the same way. Now, you do want to make sure that your endpoint is a pale pink color. If it turns too dark, it indicates that you went past your endpoint, and you're going to have a lot of error involved here, okay? You're really looking for that barely pink solution to indicate you're right where you should be and that the moles of acid and the moles of base are roughly equal. So when you go through these problems for your pre-lab, you want to make sure so you've got your flask you've got your antacid you add in some water something like 0.1 grams 0.15 grams maybe you add in water you add in your indicator you add in all that HCl um, I think you you add about 25 milliliters and then you're going to titrate with your sodium hydroxide. All of that is necessary to really find the base because you have to have the moles of your acid, the moles of the known base to find your unknown. Now guys, looking at your pre-lab questions, we tried to make sure that the ones you have are um, actually important for the lab itself. So for example, you have to write a balanced equation for number one. I kind of gave you a good hint there, but you can always look that up if you need to. Now let's talk about number two. Calculate the volume of solution you need. Well this, if you think back to Chem 1, is that formula M1V1 is equal to M2V2. You have some concentrated amount of solution, or some concentrated solution, so maybe like a 4 molar. So how much is needed to make 100 milliliters of 0. 3 molar solution. So you'd set this up, you have your first molarity, you don't know how much it's going to take, but you know you want to make about uh, 0 0.3 molar and 100 milliliters of that. It doesn't matter that molarity is in moles per liter and this is in milliliters because the two volumes are going to cancel here. So you're going to take 0.3 times 100 and then you're going to divide both sides by 4. Um, and when you get do that, you get something like 75. So when you're looking at number 2, don't let it confuse you in terms of how complicated it is. There is another way to do it, but this is the equation that they try to tell you in the pre-lab and it's by far the easiest. You can kind of see you just plug in the molarity of the concentrated one, molarity and volume of the solution you're trying to make and you solve. Now for number three, it's going to be a little bit um, more work because here you're doing exactly what you're going to be doing in lab. You're going to take 25 milliliters of your HCl and find of the, of the of a known molarity. I'm not going to write this out yet. Using milliliters, you can go from milliliters to liters, 
from liters, you can use molarity to go to moles of HCl. Now we said before the moles of HCl is equal to the moles of NaOH plus the moles of uh, the base in your antacid. So we're going to find that, oops, exactly that same way that we wrote it here. Moles of acid minus moles of NaOH gives us moles of antacid. The difference is you're going to go from milliliters to liters, from liters to molarity for this guy. You're going to do the same thing down here. We give you milliliters and we give you the molarity of your NaOH. So you're going to convert this to liters and then you're going to convert that to molarity to find your moles. Once you have moles of this and moles of this, you're just going to subtract. Um, hopefully it, it works out pretty well for you. If not, email your instructor, email your group, come see your lecture instructor. We need to make sure you're on task here because this should be very much a review for you. That's going to give you the moles of your base in the antacid. To find the, um, the neutralizing capacity, you're going to take the moles of the base, which is equivalent to the moles of acid, and you're just going to divide by the original grams of that tablet. So in number three, it's something like 0 0.315 grams that you have here. So you take the moles of um, base from 3A and you just divide by the grams there. Um, if, it, again, you need any more help, just come see us and we will, in lab, discuss how the setup really is going to look, but hopefully this gives you a really good idea of what the lab is going to function as.